Okay, so um, with the with the recent uh, Olympics and the, you know all the events going on, uh, mainly the uh, the biathlon and any of the cross country skiing that we were seeing, uh, it kind of got me thinking, you know, about how these athletes train and everything like that. And uh, I thought I'd show a kettlebell exercise that um, I believe would be beneficial to anyone who, who cross country skis or uh, as, as does biathlon. Biathlon mainly because of the, the breath control required to, to shoot accurately and, uh, you know, to come from a high heart rate and, and relax and breathe accurately and shoot accurately. Okay, so uh, the exercise is the kettlebell jerk, uh, the one-arm jerk in particular. Uh, there, there are a plethora of, of videos on YouTube, uh, mainly from the World Kettlebell Club or the American Kettlebell Club that would better serve to instruct you on how to perform this exercise correctly, but uh, just one of the things I wanted to point out, or a few things I wanted to point out about the exercise was, uh, you know, the, the breath and, and the positioning required to have an effective jerk. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the first thing we're thinking about is is with uh, these cross-country skiers and these biathletes, they're doing a lot of the, of the pulling motion, okay, when they're when they're skating on the ice or, you know, even when they're doing a classic style skate. Okay, so there's a lot of this reach and then pull. Okay, so, so the jerk, what that does is, you know, if the, if the weight is here, the jerk serves to do the opposite of that. Okay, so here and back and then the opposite is up and down with the arm. Okay, so, so we're getting development on on either side of the shoulder, we're balancing out those powerful pulling muscles required for a good skate or a, a good, good classic technique. Okay, so, so that's the first thing I want to show you, and you'll see that when I demonstrate the exercise. The second thing is the positioning. Okay, so one of the techniques in biathlon when shooting is to bury the elbow in the iliac crest. Okay, so and the elbow comes down. And we can, we can balance here and shoot accurately, okay? That allows good breath control so we're not up here and, and waving around and, you know, um, you know so we're not shooting inaccurately. It's a very, very small target we're trying to hit. So um, with, the, with the kettlebell jerk, you are required to have your elbow in the iliac crest. And I'll show you, I'll show you the way we're going to do that, okay? So clean up top and then... Elbow, iliac contact. Okay, and that's my rest position. I'm, I can I can sit here all day. I can I can hang out here, and uh, I can I can breathe. Okay, so so mainly um, the breathing in this exercise, we're gonna belly breathe. We're not gonna be using our, our thorax to, to to breathe. We're not gonna be expanding our rib cage. If we start expanding the rib cage, all right, it, it starts moving the weight around, and then. We get tired, and, and uh, you know, in, in theory, boy sport, that leads to excess effort release, and in biathlon, that will lead to uh, shaky aiming and, and inaccurate shooting. Okay, so once we bury the elbow in the iliac crest, on the exhale, and then we're breathing from here. So I'm filling this this area of my body, I'm breathing into my belly here. Right, and I exaggerated a little bit to, to kind of show you what I'm doing. I'm expanding my belly out here and then exhaling. All right, and, and the weight isn't moving back and forth. I'm not getting tired trying to keep it in place or anything like that. Okay, so if we can do this, this uh, technique, if we can get the flexibility to get that the C curve of the spine and get the elbow to iliac contact, that's really going to help somebody in, in biathlon, okay? And uh, we can do it with both arms also, okay? So even if, you're, if your shooting technique is one direction, do it with both arms so you're not, you know, um, not getting any imbalance on that side. Okay, same thing. Breath right from here. Okay, and uh, again, I'm exaggerating to demonstrate the technique. Okay? And um, the, 
that it's your technique. I'm going to show you in a second here. Again, we talked about that that um, that counteractivity. Okay, so working the the antagonist muscles of this of this powerful push when we're skating. Okay, or, or when we're doing the classic ski back and forth. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do the opposite of that. And these jerks are are typically done for high repetitions over a longer periods. So you know, 8, 10, 12 minutes, something like that. All right, and um, the American Kettlebell Club has their fitness protocol that would better serve you to to develop a progression and a protocol for advancing in the in the jerk and the length of time you're doing it. All right, so I won't be doing that here, but I, I'll show you. I'll, I'll demonstrate the jerk and uh, you know, kind of just show you how it's going to be the opposite movement of that of that that pull through with the with the poles and, and skating the cross country skating of biathlon. Okay. Okay, so you can see how that would uh, would benefit somebody cross-country skiing or biathlon. Uh, doing that for longer periods is good cardiovascular work, it's good strength endurance work, good work capacity. Uh, it would be an excellent off-season uh, workout for someone to do who's a you know, competitive cross-country skier or a biathlete. Um, I hope you, you can implement that somehow. You're, if you have a coach, your strength and conditioning coach for that particular sport would better serve to uh, you know, implement that into your program somehow. But check it out and, uh, you know, get the correct technique down. And uh, I hope you can use that, all right? Enjoy.